Welcome, glad you're here, especially if you're interested in how RL high pass filters work, because that is going to be the subject of this video. If you're interested in other type of filters, say um, low pass RL filters or high pass or low pass RC filters, i um, got some other videos on that, so of course you're welcome to check those out. But um, let's go ahead and talk about how we can use um, inductors with an RL circuit to, to make a high pass filter. And um, first, as we do that, let me go ahead and start off with a little discussion of just inductors and, and how they work. So let's just check out this circuit here. It's with um, Falstad.com. Um, you can, it's easy to make circuits here and, and just kind of simulate them out if, if you're interested. So here we have a circuit with a, we just got a DC um, voltage source here. Then we have a resistor. And down here I've got my inductor. And I've got sort of this alternate circuit set up over here just to show how this discharges. Um, but if I go ahead and, and run this, we'll see that here I'm showing the voltage across my source here. So that's what the cyan, it's cyan up here and cyan down here. So that's just the voltage. So it's just going, um, I think it's to 5 volts right now. And if I go ahead and close the circuit, we can see what happens with the, um, the current here as well as the voltage. So let's just first watch the current here. So you see the currents kind of start off slow and it kind of gets... It ramps up so that, that by those yellow dots you can see how kind of how fast the current's going. And that's basically because of this, um, what this inductor does. It has this initial um, electromotor force based on Maxwell's equations that sort of um, res make it resist this, um, this change in the current. So let's go ahead and try this again, but we'll look at the voltage across it instead. So now I'm just going to go and start it. And so I've got the 5 volts across it. And I'm going to start off with 5 volts um, also across this inductor because it's sort of resisting that flow of current um, but eventually that voltage is going to drop to zero so it's essentially ask, acting like a wire or like a short circuit so the current's just going to go right through it and there'll be no voltage drop across it no impedance across it either and when we go in and flip this switch you can see that that current's still going to keep going because it's like that current sort of charged up it's like it it's like a, it, it charged up the energy in this inductor and it's going to keep flowing um, until it sort of runs out, runs out of juice like it is um, right now. So let's move on to uh, actually a simpler circuit that just has a source here, a resistor, and this inductor. And what I'd like to do first is just show this AC source. So you can see here is a plot of it. So it's like it's starting off at zero and then it's ramping up to five right here. So if I run it, you see in time it just kind of ramps up to five and then it's going to go down to negative 5. So it's just going to oscillate that 20 hertz cycle between um, plus 5 and negative 5 volts. Um, of course we're slowing it down here. This isn't really going 20 times per second, but theoretically this would be like a 50 millisecond uh, duty cycle, but we're just kind of slowing that time down so we can, we can see what's going on. So let's actually take a look at the voltage across this um, inductor here because that is where our output voltage is going to be for a high pass um, RL filter. Okay, now that I've added it here, it's going to show up in red, but let's just see what happens as this um, initially just spikes up to, um, this input source spikes up to 5 volts. The, um, the red here is going to be our voltage across this inductor, and you can see, like as we showed before, it starts off high, it's kind of like it's because it's going to be resisting that, that current flow, and then it just trails down to zero. And if we kind of continue this duty cycle, you can see that, um, say that goes down, it's going to spike down. And this is probably worth a little bit of explanation how that goes past it. Well, you see that this um, the voltage source has a 10 volt swing across it. So that um, inductor is also going to have this sort of a, a 10 volt swing to, to resist that change, that 10 volt change. So that's why it's kind of good. It's going actually more negative than it initially, but then it kind of tends to, it kind of wants to go back to zero and it wants to go back to zero because that's when, you know, it's just going to allow all the current to flow and it's going to kind of act like a short circuit or just like a wire across it. So you can see if we go through a couple more cycles, it's just going to kind of start off spiked, but then just kind of either way, it's just going to kind of tend towards zero. It's either going to decrease down to zero or it's going to increase up to zero volts across that, that inductor. Um, so let's look at, see how this responds at, at some other frequencies. But you can see for at 20 hertz, it's not really... Um, following the, uh, the the voltage source very well because for the most part of these duty cycles it's at zero either side it's, it's tending towards zero and it's spending most of its time close to zero so it's it's not really following that voltage source so this at 20 hertz you would expect this not to pass or it would kind of reject that um, that signal but we're, we'll take a look at that more in a little bit 
the frequency response, but let's just go ahead and save this um, this little snippet right here to, to look at later. But um, next, let's go ahead and move on to 85 hertz instead. And 85 hertz is important to look at because that's going to be the, um, the cutoff frequency of this. And you can find that cutoff frequency as um, just R over 2 pi L. And if you, you plug these numbers in here, 187 ohms for R, 350 millihenries for L, you end up with a cutoff frequency around 85 um, hertz, which is, which is um, what we're looking at now. So you can see at, this is a little, little more interesting, you can see that it's um, at the cutoff frequency, the voltage across this inductor is still tending towards zero, but it's, um, before it really gets too close to zero, it switches again. This isn't really going to pass and it's not really going to reject, it's kind of like somewhere in between. So let's go ahead and save this snippet here, we'll come back and take a look at this later in our frequency response, but next let's go up to one kilohertz. Okay, let's go ahead and reset this and start it again. So you can see we're going to one kilohertz now, and you can see that this um, the cyan is my input signal, and now the cyan is my output signal across that inductor, and it's following it pretty close. I mean, there's just a little bit of a, a variation on the top, but it's it's following it pretty close. It's and it's following it because yes, it's tiny that that voltage across that inductor wants to tend towards zero, but it doesn't have a chance. It doesn't have enough time to, to, to get close to zero before it flips, so it ends up just kind of following whatever that that AC source is um, is inputting at this at these higher frequencies. You could say this passes at, at one kilohertz, but um, in order to illustrate that, let's go ahead and take a look at this on a frequency response plot. Okay, so here's our frequency response plot, and on this x-axis here, we have the uh, frequency. So we're starting off here as like uh, 20 hertz, and if you go up to... Um, here this is going to be um, 200 hertz so it's on a log scale and on the y-axis we have the the db the attenuation so for up here at zero that means it's not attenuating at all so it's just going to pa basically pass it straight but if we're if we're down here lower that means that we're going to be significantly attenuating that signal and this also is on this um, sort of a, a logarithmic scale because it's db so Let's go ahead and take a look at um, 1 kilohertz where we left off. So if we go up to 1 kilohertz way up here, you see that we're at negative 0.03 dB, which basically means it's not really attenuating much. So it's just basically, if we're looking at that voltage across the inductor, then we're really um, pa passing whatever that input signal is at that frequency. If we go down to our cutoff frequency, which was at around 85, we see that we're close to negative 3 dB, which is the definition of our cutoff frequency, where it's kind of like half passing and half not. And if we go back down to 20 hertz, which is where we initially started, we can see it's at negative around negative 13 dB, which means it's pretty significantly attenuated. It'll pass a little bit, but but not much. So it would basically this um, if you're looking at that voltage across the inductor, it's pretty much rejecting um, frequencies at that at that level. So in summary, we have it you have it rejecting at at 20 hertz. And if we, but if we go up to one kilohertz, it's passing. So it's passing the high frequencies, rejecting the lower frequency. Hence the term high pass filter. And and just to, to kind of summarize that intuition on it, it's because that inductor is is responding with time, and it, it doesn't have enough time to tend towards zero. If we if we run that frequency high enough, it's just going to follow that that input voltage. So that's that's what makes this a a high pass RL filter. And um, as I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in how a RL low pass filter works. You can check that video out and it kind of just builds upon this. If you're interested in how RC high pass or low pass filters, again, there's a um, couple videos on those if, if you're interested. Um, but if you were interested in a RL high pass filter, then I hope this video was helpful. And until next time, take care.